Okay, Dennis, thanks so much for talking to us today. Um, so uh, I know you guys have played Atlantic City a bunch of times before. Uh, is that like a, are those Northeast shows like, you know, are they, is it a different vibe because it's such like an Irish kind of American area or is it sort of, what's it like to play there? Well, um, the Northeast, I think, yeah, there's a lot of Irish Americans there, but um, there's just basically a lot of uh, Fog and Molly fans and, the demand is there for us to play there. Um, me personally, I'm I'm from uh, the Northeast, uh, Rochester, New York. So and I mean, I have a personal uh, joy of playing there, and have a you know more of a uh, personal connection to it. And now uh, the last album, uh, Speed of Darkness, um, it, it had a lot of songs that sort of touched on. Uh, the economic problems in the country and, and, and the challenges people face. So now that we're a couple of years away from, you know, when the album came out, I'm curious how the songs are standing up. You know, are they still resonating with people? You know, is, is there sort of a, a fine line between being topical and wanting songs that will, you know, last for a long time? Or uh, Detroit just went bankrupt today. I don't know if you heard that. I just saw that uh, in the New York Times. So, Wait, what, what um, went bankrupt? Detroit filed for bankruptcy. Oh, Detroit. City. Oh, right. Uh -huh. Right, yeah, yeah. Because the first time a major American city in, hist in the history of the United States has filed for bankruptcy. I could be wrong on that one. But um, that, uh, to me, is an indication that uh, if we're not out of the, out of the uh, crisis. Um, I'm sure the, uh, the people at the top, from what I uh, understand, are doing fine. The stock market's doing well, but... Um, I think middle America, lower income people are really, really still having a hard time. And uh, I think the speed of darkness will resonate uh, for years to come as long as this uh, social and economic situation continues the way it is. I think um, the songs, most of the songs on it will. There's other songs on there that I think are pretty... Uh, timeless it can apply to any uh generation um at any time but unfortunately this is probably not going to end anytime soon so i think i think the relevance of speed of darkness is uh still there i think um people fans that i meet and talk to still connect with it and relate to it so that was a good and yeah, it was a good question. Uh, you know, it's ironic that Detroit filed bankruptcy the day you asked me the question. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Detroit, for doing that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's interesting that you, I mean, you're um, you're known for kind of as a band for, you know, these sort of some darker songs and taking on these tough topics, but yet also known for these really rollicking, you know, exciting, fun shows. And so, is that um, sort of the, the music sort of sets the tone, the, the sound sets the tone, even though the, the lyrics might be sort of dark, but you sort of have this upbeat quality to a lot of the songs? Or... Yeah, I think um, we've done that for, since day one. If you listen to our first album, Swagger, Dave's father passed away when Dave was very young, and there's songs uh, on that about losing your father or a loved one at such a young age, and there's there's a certain sentiment that I find uh, after being in this band and meeting so many Irish people, having all these horrible times, troubles, and problems, but after or they have a way of, of putting a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say humor, but they combine a certain element of, of um, optimism or humor instead of just completely dour, dark, brooding, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a little bit of, I don't know, looking maybe on the bright side of things as well. Right. And I think our music, our music, you know, totally, sonically, yes, it sounds chipper and upbeat, and you want to grab a beer and smash into your friends and fall on your face drunk and have fun and all that, but... Um, I think I think you can combine the sentiment of loss, pain, loss, love, losing your job, or these 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 
things that happen to people in everyday life. But at the end of it, you also, you know, you can't just keep harping on that. You have to, I guess, move on. And, and, and I think I, the Irish, Irish culture has always had that in it, that, that, the, the little sense, that little twinkle of optimism or humor at the end of such a horrible thing. And so do you know where uh, you're headed with uh, new music? Have you started working on the next album, or, or do you write songs along the way, or do you do them all in sort of a bunch when you're getting ready for an album? Uh, Dave, uh, our singer, is the principal songwriter, and we've uh, we've purposely had a light year so he can uh, write and focus on our new, writing a new record. Uh, me personally, I, I'm, I'm always coming up with ideas and song ideas and parts and um and i record them and you know with some whatever sticks whatever sticks and whatever works works and all the other band members do the same and when we get together um you just try to connect it all and fit it all together and sometimes you don't use any of the ideas you had for a song you just come up with new things on the spot but Dave has been writing this past year for uh, another record and is this to be recorded uh, in 2013, or you're not sure yet? I am. I'm thinking it's come. It's going to be recorded next year, uh -huh. because because this year we're doing we're heading over to Russia and Europe for the month of August, and then the month of November we're going to be back over in Europe. So I think that pretty much pushes it to next year and then you know next year in the springtime we have our annual green 17 tour and uh -huh. so that so I, I think it's going to be next year and when you say you're you sort of record these bits of different things at different times uh you know is there a starting point for you uh, is it rock you know celtic music punk is there you know is there a sort of a foundation that you draw from when you're sort of you know playing with music uh it's it's Odd. It's one of those things. Uh, I uh, I probably have hours of ideas that wouldn't be right for the band Foggy Molly, but I just go, you know, get it out of my system and put it down. You know, sometimes I'll put um I'll just I'll purposely put a banjo on or play a, play a banjo because I have a banjo and it forces me to think differently and outside the the box of the I play the electric guitar, so it makes me think differently and. And uh, I'll do things like that, or I'll I can pluck out things on the piano. I'll do some things like that to inspire myself to do uh, different things. So I really don't have a starting point. It's kind of whenever it hits me. And um, thank God for my my iPhone now with the recording app they have because I I've uh, it's, it's it's those moments that I've seen Dave do it too. Actually, it's funny and when he gets like zapped with an idea, he immediately takes it out and either sings into it or tells you know, talk the lyric into it, and then you have it. It's one, it's a great tool to um, to have with you. I mean, before I used to have to have a tape recorder with me at all times or wait and try to memorize it until I got to the tape recorder. Yeah, I hate when I have those, like, great ideas in the shower. It's like, what do you do then? <laughs> you have to hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, on the airplane. Well, you could use your phone on an airplane, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly, precisely. That It's just one of those things where you wake up with an idea and, when when it comes, it comes, uh, and and it's uh, getting it down is the uh, is the important part. And having said that, you know, sometimes they sound like complete uh, crap after you listen back to them. You know, a few days later, you're like, what the hell was I thinking? And sometimes, you know, the really good ones I think hold up, and you know, after you keep listening to them and honing them and and working on them, they they develop into generally develop into something good. And so, uh, how do you sort of explain, uh, the band's chemistry after all these years? Uh, is there, a, you know, why do you think you'd be able to sort of make it all work for, you know, just spend a lot of time on the road together, but, uh, sometimes that can be a bad thing for a band, so. Yeah. Water and oil. <laughs> no. no, that's not <laughs> our chemistry. <laughs> um, we, you know, it's, it's a fun, it's a really funny thing that say that joke, but. It is really true. We are seven completely different people from all walks of life, different ages, different countries, different backgrounds, different socioeconomic. It, it's, it, we couldn't be more different. 
people. But we got together in this band, and the band is what kind of solidifies us, and we've grown together as, as like, I call it my second family. And the chemistry, it's what we have is chemistry. We have a chemistry that, you know, whenever, whatever we do, we take time off, take the song time off, and when we start playing, it's like, yeah, this is bloggy molly. It's, you, you can't, you can't just deny it or, it's the chemistry that we have when we're together. When we try to play a couple songs and we do things, it's just our chemistry together. That's, that's kind of what we do and who we are. And I think it's, um, it's a thing that I'll always say and it's, it's the, the legacy of the band is our chemistry, what we have together. I mean, outside of the music we play together, I don't know. What the hell? What are we going to keep up? Um, you see, I'm, I don't see my point where it's, um, it's almost like you couldn't find seven different people, put them in a room and say, make music now and create this music that people will enjoy and listen to. I think we're blessed, actually, that it, it, it just came to It's kind of fell together. Sort of the opposites attract kind of theory of, of, of life, that, you know, it's having all these different personalities and that somehow it all comes together in the music, even if it wouldn't come together in another setting, perhaps, or something. Oh, uh, you're you're the true professional, my friend. Yes, that is, that is exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, glad I'm glad we're on the same page here. All right, and uh, anything else going on with the band that I should know about? Any other news or anything else uh, before we go today? Well, I covered the tour dates. Uh, I think you know um, we've been recording a lot of. Uh, I think we've been recording every show now for the last ten years, if I'm not mistaken. So we have, um, we always, uh, we want to go back and look at, you know, find some real gems, some real magical moments, uh, and perhaps put that, put that out on a, on a record. That's another thing we're talking about at the moment, um, from all, from all over the world. So that, that, that'll take some time, but it'll be a fun project, I think, to find just some of those magical nights or songs or improv, you know, sometimes we just started playing a Johnny Cash song and a couple of times it just sounded so great. So, um, that might be, uh, uh, the next project, uh, or the next thing we put out. We're talking about that. I don't know. Um, so, so far that, that, I mean, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for, for us right now. And that would be, have you done a live album before? Would this be the, or we, the first time you're doing something like this? Yeah, we've done, uh, our first record was a live album, and then we put out, yeah, we got, we got, uh, I think we have three live records. We're trying to catch up okay. to the Rolling Stones. I think they have, like, 15 <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Right, right. But, they but this would be something di- different that it's this <laughs> sort of sampling of, of all these different songs from different shows, is what you're saying. It's sort of like a, mm-hmm. a greatest hits of a live album or something. Yes, and also uh, for uh, maybe um, a change of arrangement in the performance, or uh, who knows? It's been ten years. Like it's hard to remember everything when you start revisiting some of this stuff. You go, oh yeah, um, and and, and uh, sometimes you know if a song is just completely kicking your ass, sounding great, that you know that would be a good thing to to share with people. Okay, well, I think that's uh, everything on my list. So thanks so much, Dennis. Appreciate you calling in today. My pleasure. Okay, take care. Thanks. You too. Bye.